Hi, welcome to this tutorial on finding the mode of a continuous random variable. Now what I've got here is a selection of probability density functions f of x for a continuous random variable. And when we want to find the mode, what we're looking for is the value of x below the highest point on a probability density function. It's the point, if you like, where the random variable x is most dense. So if we take this probability density function here, from the sketch you can clearly see that the highest point is here, and so this point, this value of x, would be the mode for this particular probability density function. When we look at this probability density function, the highest point is here, and so this point here would be the mode. And when we have this particular probability density function, we've got two points which are equally at the same height. So this one has two modes. The first mode would be this value directly under the highest point here, and another one here. And we often refer to this as being bimodal, having two modes. Sometimes probability density functions don't have any modes. And this is a typical example. Because the highest point is always along here. So if you like, there would be an infinite number of modes. But in situations like this, we say that there are no modes. Okay, so there's no mode for this particular probability density function. Now, as I've been trying to illustrate in these four examples, just by drawing the sketch of the probability density function, you can often see where the mode is going to be. But in a probability density function like this, the highest point is up here, and it's not very clear where the mode is. I mean, we know it's the value below it, all right, but we're not too sure what value this is going to be. And the way around this is that because the curve turns at this point, we know that the gradient at this point, which is given by f dash x, or to differentiate f of x with respect to x, this gives the gradient at any point on the curve, and we know that at this point the gradient is equal to zero. Unlike any of these graphs here, the gradient where the mode is is not zero. All right? But this particular probability density function, the gradient is zero. And it's this type of question that I'd like to run through, I'll, I'll run through an example, show you how we can work out the mode in situations like this, where you cannot observe it directly from the probability density function. Okay, so let's have a look at that example. Now in this example then, we've got the random variable x has a probability density function given by f of x equals 3 quarters x squared, all multiplied by 2 minus x, for x between and including naught and 2. And it's zero otherwise, and what we've got to do is find the mode. So let's just quickly sketch the probability density function. We've got f of x and x here on the axis, going between naught and 2. Now for the function here, what we've got is a negative x cubed graph, because the x squared times minus x is going to be negative x cubed. And between 0 and 2, this graph crosses the x-axis when this is equal to 0. And that would be when x is 0 and when x is 2. So a typical cubic curve like that would look something like this. But we're only interested in the curve between 0 and 2. So that would mean that part of the graph. So we can get rid of the cubic graph. And what we've got is that 
this particular graph is zero otherwise, so we can sketch that in like so. Now we've got to find the mode, and the mode would be directly underneath the highest point, so it'd be somewhere round here. This would be the mode. Now at this point here, we have what's called a stationary point. The gradient then is zero, so we know that at this particular point, f dash x is going to equal zero. So we need to differentiate f of x with respect to x. So if I just put down what f of x is, again, just here, f of x equals 3 quarters x squared multiplied by 2 minus x. Now in order to differentiate this, what I'm going to do is not multiply out the whole bracket, okay? I'm just going to leave the 3 quarters there and just multiply through by x squared. So I get 2x squared minus x cubed. Now I need to differentiate this with respect to x, so f dash x equals, I can leave the 3 quarters there and just multiply this with the differential of these two terms with respect to x. So differentiating 2x squared gives 4x and differentiating the minus x cubed gives me 3x squared. So for the mode, let's just put that down, for the mode f dash x equals 0. So therefore we've got 3 quarters of 4x minus 3x squared equals 0. We'll just carry on down here. Now the 3 quarters can't be 0, so it must be this factor here, 4x, but therefore 4x minus 3x squared must equal 0. I can pull x out as a common factor and get x bracket 4 minus 3x equals 0. So that would mean that either x equals 0 or the other factor 4 minus 3x equals 0, which leads to x being equal to 4 thirds. Well, we've got two answers here and we only want one value. Well, clearly it is the 4 thirds rather than the 0. You're getting the 0 because, remember, the cubic curve looks something like this and you had a stationary point, a turning point, a point where the gradient was 0 at 0, okay, just there. But that's not relevant to what we want, so therefore we can say that the mode must be 4 thirds. So therefore the mode equals 4 thirds. And there you have it. So I hope you've been able to follow the example and can use this method then to find the mode when you're looking for a stationary point. Okay, well that brings us to the end then of this particular tutorial.